My name is Joanne Evans, I'm 33 and I live in a little village in the Welsh Valleys. Our story starts back in 2005, following on from the birth of our second son Elliot. Elliot was almost five months old. Me and my husband were cushed upon the settee when all of a sudden Elliot went really stiff and blue. After failing to bring him round, me and my husband rushed to the hospital in our car. It was really crazy when we got there. They started rushing round him, fitting him with tubes and monitors and doing all these different tests. We were really scared. Me and my husband were terrified that we were going to lose him at this point. And seeing him so ill, it's not a very pleasant memory. After being in HDU for a few days, the doctor called us to one side and took us into the office. He sat us down and explained that they'd found a diagnosis and Elliot had a condition called Listen Carefully. My name is Daniela Piltz and I'm a consultant in clinical genetics. Uh, Listen Carefully is a, a developmental abnormality of the brain during development of the baby in the womb and it particularly affects, affects the grey matter of the brain. One of the um, results of uh, Listen Carefully is that there is a, a reduction in the folding at the surface of the brain and sometimes the folding can be um, completely absent. And listen cephaly means smooth brain in Greek because when the folding is absent, the surface of the brain looks smooth. Children who have a completely smooth brain usually are very severely affected. Um, and then you can get um, forms of listen cephaly where you have absence of folding in some areas of the brain and an attempt of folding in others, and that is often known as pachygyria, because the folds at the surface of the brain um, are thicker and um, broader and less in number than we'd normally see. The mechanism um, of lysencephaly is that so the the nerve cells uh, form the grey matter at the surface of the brain. Um, but they develop on the inside of the brain, so the nerve cells are all made on the inside of the brain, then have to make a journey from the inside to the outside of the brain to um, then form the grey matter at the surface. And because the neurons have stopped their journey at various positions earlier on, um, I've met a few children who did learn to walk and who were walking, the oldest child I saw um, walking was 10, which is also the oldest child I've ever seen with lysencephaly who hadn't developed seizures yet. Um, so, but I think that they are the exception. Me and my husband were devastated by this news. I mean, it was really hard and traumatic trying to find the right words to, to explain to our family and friends what the diagnosis meant when we didn't really fully understand it ourselves. Elliot's a lovely little boy, and despite all the complications his condition has brought, he has developed his own little personality. He's determined and a fighter. If he doesn't like something, he'll certainly let you know that, that he doesn't want to be messed around. Elliot loves sensory interaction. He's particularly fond of all the different types of lights, the fibre optics and the bubble tubes. He also really loves music. I can understand what he's feeling. might not be able to say the exact problem, but I know when something's bothering him and he will let me hold his hand, and that's a privilege in Elliot's world. Just before Christmas, I knew he had a chest infection, and the doctors didn't seem to think that that was the case. They said, we'll just observe him. If they'd listened to me and taken some proactive measures, he may not have ended up being in HDU like he was. And that's, that scares me. I wish they'd trust me more. People don't seem to understand what it's like living with a child with special needs. They don't realise how much it, of an impact it has on your life, other than the obvious. The little things, popping to the shops 
going out for the day or extra things you need to take with you, medicine, feed, by the time you strap him into the car, take him back up to the car. And it's easily adding another 10, 15 minutes onto your journey. Just trying to relax in, in the evening when all the other kids have gone to bed, trying to sit down and watch a programme. I end up pausing it thanks to Skype Plus for, you know, popping in to see Elliot, checking on him, he may be grizzling, having a seizure. There's numerous things. I can't seem to relax. Even when I'm in bed, it's, it's not a proper night's sleep. I feel really sorry for Elliot because, because he can't walk, talk, eat, and he keeps having seizures all the time, which I don't like. I sometimes help out by turning off Elliot's feed pumps and if Elliot's making any strange noises I'll call mum and dad. Over the last two years we've been trying to fight to get Elliot into the local respite centre which will enable us to have a weekend's break every now and again to recharge our batteries and do those things that other people take for granted. We've had a bit of a fight. Social services and us believe that Elliot should have a one-to-one carer due to his seizures and his feeding problems. The health board say that he's not ill enough. I don't understand this. How can a child like Elliot not be ill enough? You know, he needs constant supervision. I don't know how ill he needs to be for him to qualify for that funding. And having little fights like this, it takes up energy that we could better be using on looking after Elliot. When Elliot was three, he got accepted to go to Trinity Field Special School. He settled in really well. It takes a while to get to know the staff. The staff there are amazing and as far as I know, everybody loves him. My name is Anthony Rees. I'm the IT coordinator at Trinity Fields and a class teacher as well. I teach a class of year nines. Um, I think with Elliot, it's having access to different learning environments like the sensory rooms. He's got access to technology as well that he wouldn't necessarily be, be able to buy um, outside of the school because some of it's quite expensive. Uh, we've got the sensory room, which is here. He also uses the light room and the dark room. Uh, he uses the IT suite as well, which has all sorts of different um, equipment in there to um, assist Elliot with interaction and his independence. And the pool as well, so he can have a nice swim. There's the eye gaze tracking, which I think is very suited to Elliot because um, that uses infrared beams t- to track the m- uh, movement of pupils. So Elliot could technically access anything he wanted to by just moving his eyes and looking at it. I think that's really exciting for Elliot. I think we first used the eye gaze with Elliot a couple of months back and uh, it was really amazing because he's he really focused in on it and he really looked at it and you can tell that he was interacting with it very well. Also with the iPads as well, I think I think he appreciates the fact that he can do things himself rather than having somebody maybe help him hold an instrument and shake it, that he can actually, you know, uh, with the uh, little movement that he has, that he can actually have an effect himself. Elliot's limits in terms of um, his interaction with the outside world, there won't be any barriers in place because of his um, physical needs, really. So just because he can't use a keyboard, it doesn't mean he can't write on the screen. Just because he can't um, switch on the TV physically with a remote control, it doesn't mean he can't access something else that can enable him to um, have that effect on his environment. So the, you know, the, the possibilities are endless, really. We just have to wait and see how Elliot gets on with it, really. Elliot really benefits from going to Trinity Fields. They're able to provide him support and facilities that we wouldn't be able to do at home due to cost and space. So those little things that they have make a big difference to Elliot's life. Elliot is nearly eight years old now, and things are going all right at the moment. He seems to be doing pretty well. Seizures are controlled to a certain degree. Even though having a child who listen carefully is a lot of hard work, it's not all doom and gloom, and they do bring a lot of sunshine to your life. They introduce you to people you would never have met without this situation. And there is a lot of support out there to help you. So if you are in this situation, just remember you are not on your own.